All right, so what we're gonna do here is a quick tutorial, just an overview of the Brushes app. Um, as uh, I've said many times before, the Brushes app is one of the best apps that you can use to paint with. Uh, unfortunately, last year we couldn't use it because um, the Brushes app wasn't compatible with iOS 8, which is the operating system on our iPads, but uh, they have released a new version of brushes called Brushes Redux, which you can see on the right hand side of my screen. And so what this video is going to be basically is just a tutorial, really quick run through of brushes and how to use brushes. So I'm not going to be doing any painting with it. So when we open up brushes, the first thing that we will see is the gallery and the gallery will show us our paintings. As you can see, I don't have any paintings yet. Uh, the apple is just a stock uh, painting that comes on the app. Across the top, we see some buttons. On the left-hand side, we see a select, and if I touch that, uh, it'll just allow me to select the painting, and I can delete it, or I can share it, or whatever. I'm not going to do anything with that. On the right-hand side, there's a folder. If I tap that, then we get uh, methods for sharing, such as Dropbox. Um, I don't have a Dropbox account linked here, so I can't really do anything with that. Now, probably the most important button on this page is the plus button, and the plus button is for us to create a new painting. Now, when I touch the plus button, you see I get this little menu that pops up, and down at the bottom there's little dots, and you can see as I swipe through the menus, those dots are lighting up. If you look at the top, it's saying basically different sizes. Um, uh, uh, the numbers are the pixel count that would be included in my painting. So that, that translates to the photo's resolution or how big it is. That's why when I scroll and we have less pixels here, the photo is going to be smaller. And as I scroll to the right, I'm getting bigger pixels. There's different dimensions as well. Um, dimensions mean length and width. So this one's more narrow. Um, and then also, as we get bigger and bigger, this is like an iPad screen. So you can make different sizes. So what we want to do is we want to pick the biggest size because that's what's going to make the prettiest painting. Now, next to the numbers, you can see there's a little circular arrow. If I uh, press that, then it um, will change the orientation of my painting. So if I want my painting to be oriented in landscape mode, I would uh, do that if I want it in portrait mode going up and down, like that. The last thing that we need to do to start a new painting is press the create button, which is right above that circular arrow, and that's going to take us into the painting window. So the painting window, uh, we can see our painting surface here. That's the rectangle that you see. At the top it says painting at 33%. What that means is how much I've zoomed in. So if I pinch out, I can zoom in really far, and if I pinch in, I can zoom uh, and make the picture really small. Now, what is that good for? Well, if I want to cover up the surface of my uh, painting really quickly with one color, like so, say I want it just to be this green, I can zoom out and I can just swipe my hand across it really, really quickly. And then it's really easy just to swipe across it. Uh, to fill up that background. Maybe that's going to be my background color. Now, um, for zooming in, what's that good for? Well, if we get to a very complicated painting, we may want to zoom in and out for different details, maybe adding detail or taking away detail or making corrections. So zooming in is good for that. Uh, across the bottom, just below, there's a slider that you saw me use a moment ago. The slider, if I slide all the way to the uh, left, I have a very small, you said it says one, one pixel, three pixels, that's how big the mark is going to be. And then of course all the way to the right, uh, that's uh, the largest mark that we can make. So that's what the slider is for. Now um, one of the most important buttons that you're probably going to use is just to the right of the slider and it's, it looks like a little squiggly arrow, that's the undo button. So you see I pressed it and my color that I painted went away. And then you see another squiggly arrow pointing the opposite direction lights up. That's the redo button. That's if I want to bring something back. Maybe I'm undoing and I undo one too many and I take away a detail that I want. So that's the undo button. 
Now all the way to the left on the bottom, there's the button with the green. And if I tap on that, we get the color palette and the color mixing tray. So the first thing is there's two circles in this tray that I want to call attention to. In the square on the right, there's a little white circle and I can drag it around. And then in the square, in the color wheel to the left, there's a little circle that goes around the color wheel. Now if I drag that around, you can see that I'm changing my selected color. So what these two circles do is allow me to select a color. So if I move that um, circle to the red, you can see the color in that, that larger circle in the middle of the color wheel has turned into that color. Now if you look to the color mixing tray, that allows me to change my tints and shades. So here's that all the way in the upper left corner, that's going to be white. All the way in the bottom left corner is black. Um, same thing over here, that's black. And then my brightest version of the color I've selected will be all the way in the upper right. And then of course in between we have tints and shades. Tint is any color mixed with white, so pinks. And shades are any color mixed with black, so um, something like this maroon color here. I'm going to go all the way back up there. Now below there's also another slider here. What that does is that makes your color translucent. So and translucent means that it's partially see-through. So if we want something to be more see-through, we'd slide it to the left. If we want it to be less see-through or opaque, opaque means that you can't see through it. That's all the way to the right. Now down at the bottom there are what I call color swatches. Those are pre-mixed colors. Um, they're kind of like shortcuts. And then you can see there are some empty ones down there with um, uh, pluses in them. So let's say I wanted to take this maroon color and I wanted to select it and then I press that um, plus button down there on one of those swatches and I've now added that color so that's a shortcut so maybe that's a color I'm going to use a lot. Alright so that is the color mixing tray. Very very cool um, uh, tool to be using. Oh and one last thing the little circle behind the big circle that is the last color that you use so if you want to switch back to that really quick just as a shortcut you can press that. So now I'm back there. Of course, I can also press my pre-mix, pre go back to that. Okay, so let's get out of there. Now, the next button here is the brushes uh, button. In, it just means that I've selected the brush. If I select the eraser, it means that I've selected the eraser. Okay, we're not really going to use the eraser. It's actually going to be easier to paint white on top of things to make corrections than to erase because when you erase, you erase everything that's there and that can be tricky especially if you're working in layers which hopefully we will get to do that. The next, and I'm going to switch back to the brush. The next button is the actual brush the mark selector. We're probably not going to use this too much. This is cool but um, uh, it'll probably be easy to stick with one brush stroke. If you um, get this app at home and you paint on it at home you may have a chance to experiment with that a little bit more. And there's buttons on the top I can um, of course, all the way to the left, I can delete a brush stroke that I never use. Maybe I never use it. I can add a brush stroke. And um, in each brush stroke as I select, you see there's an edit button all the way to the left. That allows me to, whoops, that allows me to um, go in and play with that brush stroke and make some different types of brush strokes so I can change the intensity, the angle, spacing, things like that. Um, I don't know exactly what jitter does but it's kind of neat and so all of those things so I'm gonna leave that brush stroke like that um, so that's the brush stroke and now the other button that we're going to talk about today is the uh, the layers button so brushes lets you create layers and if I tap on that it gives me the layer menu and across the top there are some buttons the delete button of course you know what that does and then the plus button to the right allows me to add another layer so now I've got my bottom layer will be my the one the first layer the one with the green and then anything that I paint on the two layer is going to be on top of that so let's say that I want to um, paint something maybe some black uh, maybe I want to do a little black here but I want it to be slightly transparent on top of the green because I still want to see the green um, below it, seeing coming through the black basically. So that's how you can do this. 
and I am not touching anything on that bottom layer. Not touching anything on that bottom layer. This is all another layer. And of course I can zoom in to get really detailed. The more that you add a color, the darker it gets, the more, even when you have it in translucent mode. So you can get really detailed with it. Okay, I get too much into my drawing there. Now, one thing that's neat about this is if you if I open up the layers menu, there are three little uh, lines on there. If I drag those, I can change that, and of course that'll put my face layer that I just painted there on the bottom. So I'm probably going to want to keep it like that. Now, what is this good for? Well, let's say I want to start painting something on top of this face, but I don't want it to interfere with the lines that I drew. I can create another layer and I can paint on top of it, or in another way, maybe I want to do the skin color, but I want to do that as a second layer. So I can put that under underneath that layer by dragging it, and then now I can go to the color mixing tray, and I can get a flesh color, maybe that, like that, and now I can go in and I can start to paint. Oops, let me make that brush size a little bit bigger. And now what I'm doing here really is I'm painting like watercolors. So this, this skin color that I mixed here is underneath this layer. So there you go. So that is a quick overview of brushes. The last thing that I need to do though is I need to show you how to put your name on your paper and normally this will be the first thing we do. So once we create a painting we need to tap back to the gallery and when we go back to the gallery we'll see our painting and you'll see where it says painting. You're going to take your finger and you're going to double tap right on the word painting and you're going to write your name or tap, type your name however you want to think about it Oops. and then tap done and then that's how you put your name on your paper and then you can tap on it and you can go back in and there's of course the playback where you can see how you painted the whole thing and it'll take you step by step through everything and of course this is not a finished painting if I want to resume I just swipe where it says swipe here to paint Sometimes it takes a few tries to get that to work. I don't know why. Uh, and then there it is. And there, there's more we can do, but that's probably enough for this video already.